if you use SketchUp or Rhino or any other software, approximately 90 to 95 percent of all features are the same across these platforms. There might be differences like in the placement or appearance of icons, but the basic functionality remains the same. Before you get started, first from the Enscape menu, which we have here in Revit, I'll click on this Start button right here. Another topic is Pan, which involves using the middle mouse button colloquially known as MMB, middle mouse button. To pan back and forth, you can see how I can move. And if I hold control, shift and control, this panning or zooming happens much faster. Another point is that if I hold the middle mouse button, the MMB, and perform what's known as pan, like this, pan, panning, essentially means moving the observer's point of view, the whole camera moves without being zoomed in or out. See, I'm not zooming. It's just moving up, down, left, and right. And well, it might be similar to using keys A and W, and the keys I'm about to show you. The keys E and the key Q, as you can see here. We've mentioned the key E moves you upward and the key Q moves you downward. Again, if I hold shift and combine it with these keys, the speed of moving up and down and the camera's in responsiveness in this movement increases. We have another key here called space. The space key toggles the walk or fly mode. I think it's better to describe the ghost mode instead of fly and I'll explain why. If I press the space key, it grounds me. And now I'm on the ground. This we have another discussion named BIM in escape BIM mode. When we activate it and click on any of these materials, it shows us the information related to the material of the object we selected. And now that material technically in compliance as well as dimension height and details about which floor it's on. We said Enscape is a plugin that installs on software within the BIM-centric sphere including Revit which is a BIM-centric software. This information includes the length, width and height and now possibly even details about the materials themselves. We're talking about IFC issues or material discussions here. We have their names and all of these are saved in the Revit software. When I click on one of these it shows me that information and we can even do the reverse of this. For example I come here where I have different doors I select one of these doors. Suppose these doors here are made of glass, I believe. They are on that side of my project. Now these are within the project itself. Glass doors that you see here are highlighted in this manner. I open each of these. I can see where they are used in the project and view the information available on each of these doors. If I click on metal material, in this material, I want to use an option known as Cutout. From the Transparency section, I select the Texture option. Here I choose one of these images as the suitable option for Cutout. Uh, let me move forward. Well, since it's not very pretty, wait, let me change it. This image is more appropriate. I'll also make it a bit larger. In this state, not only do I have light passing through due to the cutout, but also have cuts that allow the background to be seen. Now if I want to reverse these cuts in this design, I need to swap the black and white areas of the image which I can easily do using the inverted option. As you can see, it easily reverses the cutting effect compared to the previous design. Now, if I want the color of this material to appear black in the render, what should I do? We can come here and set the color to black. And you can even use... And now, as you can see, we have grass with a striped pattern. We can adjust the color intensity uh, right here. As you see, I'm doing it. Yes and I'll also reduce it a bit to get a more suitable pattern in terms of col coloration and it's that easy. 
Now if I want, I can import any other pattern and see the effect. And look how beautiful and easy that is. Which is in MP4 format. And assign it. Okay. As you can see, as soon as the video is assigned, it is applied in Enscape and visible in the scene. Click here to start and the second click up to here. After the second click, the selected items are randomly placed throughout the project. Keep in mind that before hitting apply changes, we can make some edits like reducing the width of this line right here. Or we can increase the number of objects in the density section. We can also specify how these objects are distributed from the distribution settings. The random rotation object randomly rotates the objects around their axis, which enhances the natural look of the setup. However, for certain specific objects like vehicle, this option is not recommended. And here I'm going to enable the random rotation for the plants. The preview selected area option also provides a real-time preview before we apply the object placement in the project. If the preview doesn't look good, we can hit regenerate to randomly rearrange the layout. I'll press this option a few times until we reach an arrangement that looks right and import it again. Great! Now, as you can see, the correct chair without the extra elements has been imported. I can adjust my view using the 5, 8, 2, 4, and 6 number numpad keys. If you import your file and it shows up as an empty space because the coordinates aren't set to 0, 0, 0, you can quickly locate the object using these numbers. As you can see, the two materials we assigned in 3D Max are now here. I can change the color of the texture of those parts if needed. Alright, let me apply the wood texture to the legs of the chair and move the camera closer. Now let's apply the same wood texture to the second material. Okay. Yes, let me apply it. All right. Uh, the texture setting we convert in the previous lesson also apply here. I'll adjust the texture quality settings, as you see, until I get the desired quality. Let me tweak them a little bit. I'll also tweak the texture settings for the chair legs. Yes, you can adjust them as well. I'll add some bump mapping and adjust the tint slightly to differentiate it from the rest of the chair. Yes, let me select yes, okay, and adjust it. After finishing the material adjustment, I'll set the camera angle for the gallery photo or custom asset list. See? Okay, after defining the area, I'll click on the import option. Let's wait a bit for the specified site plan to download into the project. Alright, as we can see, the site plan has been placed around our project. There's also a building shown as a cube here, which we can control its visibility from the list on the left. Now you can see the sun as a direct light source like this. Now, see how this option affects the sunlight. As I increase it, the light source becomes more dazzling and creates a light halo. You see? 
you can even notice the dirt and light halos reflecting on the camera lens, making it more realistic like in real world photography and filming. It's so beautiful. Uh, and reducing it removes the light halo from the camera lens. The next option is Bloom. This controls the glow of light emitting objects or the reflection, uh, the reflections of objects hit by light. Increasing it gives everything a kind of halo or makes them appear as their own light sources. Or at the bottom left or right corner of the screen you use the watermark section I have already prepared an image without a background in PNG format that matches my screen size to use as a watermark in the project when I click OK I can manage and adjust where the watermark image appears on the screen Note that if the watermark image doesn't move to the corners of the screen, it's because the watermarks... Uh, okay, and now the 360 image uh, from the Enscape website has fully loaded on my system, and I can rotate 360 degree by holding down the left mouse button. Note that this is just a 360 degree image, so you can't walk around it you can only look around your environment in a 360 degree view. Uh, this website link can be opened by anyone you send it to. Now there are other ways to access the uploaded image from this three dot menu. The next option is copy link which directly saves the website address in your computer's uh, clipboard. Uh, the copy QR code option saves the QR code image to your computer's memory and the next option also generates a QR code image for use in Photoshop or for printing. Definitely practice and try this out several times. Alright, now let's see the effects of the settings we've made together. Nicely done animation as you see. While you're watching it, so after making all these settings, can you save the placement and movement of the cameras and their settings? Uh, VR mode is active now, and I can see the two controllers here. The right controller acts as a laser pointer. Whenever I point and click, I instantly teleport there. Uh, to look around, I need to turn my head in different directions. As you can see, with the right controller, I can teleport to any spot I point and click at it instantly. If I want to talk, if I want to walk around, I use the joystick on the left controller to move forward and backward with my thumb. The left controller has X and Y buttons, which let me switch between fly mode and walk mode, determining how I navigate the environment. Right now, I'm walking in walk mode.